think I'm good. Okay. Hey everyone. Ugh. This is Cass Contents. I keep telling myself I won't make these videos and I won't make the channel, but I was just watching the James Vanderbeek video about his uh, cancer diagnosis, colorectal cancer diagnosis, and about how people are being diagnosed younger and younger, healthy people um, with colorectal cancer. And there are these videos of, and I'm not necessarily swayed by this, but like his beautiful children, there's like six or seven children and his wife and they're all, and it just, I wanted to make this video because I feel like, and this is for entertainment value, this is not medical. This is just, you know, someone talking shit on the internet. I know nothing. Go see your doctor, blah, blah, blah. Don't take my word for it. But in 2019, and actually I think that's when he got his cancer diagnosis, he said, or it was 2020. But in 2019, I started something called the GAPS diet. And you can look that up and I'll put a link to it but because I was so severely constipated like I never went to the bathroom ever and when I tried things I remember trying like I don't even know what I did but it was like psyllium fiber like <laughs> something where you almost you couldn't help but go to the bathroom and I had to go see I had to go to the hospital to see a psychologist and was like running to the bathroom and like burning pain anyway if that's not tmi i don't know what's tmi but this happens to people so i want to talk about it i don't care about putting myself out there and talking about it you know for myself but anyway so i said i have to do something serious i can't just keep eating all the stuff i'm eating the way i'm going and it's gonna get better because it's not and you know in my opinion, and my opinion means nothing totally, but like just being given laxatives for constipation, especially long-term chronic constipation, is not the answer. But anyway, so I started something called the GAPS diet, and you can look it up and you can do the diet if you want, but really you're not going to do that diet if you're not really committed and really desperate to do something differently for yourself. Like if you're not really at that point where you're like, I have to do something, my life is not normal, like then you won't do that diet. I feel like once you get in the hang of it, you change your thinking, all that, that's the hard part. And then once you do that, you know, you can make broth for a month and freeze it. Like you, it doesn't have to be that crazy. The diet actually, I feel like gets to be pretty easy after a while and your body doesn't have those cravings for carbs in the same way because you're not eating them but this is the gist for those of you that are interested and after doing this for i'd say about seven days after i did this process i was able to go to the bathroom every single day which to me was truly like a miracle so what I did initially, which is not part of the GAPS diet, is I did an S, a cleanse for SIBO. So I took a round or two of antibiotics, which are not traditional antibiotics. They're antimicrobials. And the ones I took are called uh, dysbiocide and BC, BC, no, dysbiocide. You can look it up. If you look up dysbiocide, the other one will probably come up that you pair. Actually, dysbiocide is now called biome balance. But I took a round of those antibiotics, which have been shown to be just as effective, if not more so, especially if two rounds are taken, than the antibiotic remaxifen, I think it's called. So what happens is, the theory is that your gut has an overgrowth of negative bacteria because of all kinds of things that we do, pesticides, hormones in our meat, pollution, um, the birth control pill, over-the-counters, antibiotics, these things that 
hurt our gut, allow for pathogenic bacteria to flourish. And that pathogenic bacteria starts to take over our good bacteria. And then what often happens, at least this is my understanding, this is what I've read, I'm not trying to claim anything. Um, then because we have stuff happen, negative because of this stuff, the reaction is to take more antibiotics, which kills more of our positive bacteria until maybe we get to the point that our body is not functioning. Regular things are not going the way they should. We have excessive gas, constipation, diarrhea, headaches, migraines. That, that's what I dealt with, Const chronic constipation. And then the increase in uh, migraines to the point where I was getting them, you know, three or four times a week. And then endometriosis symptoms as well, which is pre, uh, pre something, I can't think of the word, a long time ago. <laughs> so taking the GAPS diet is, is, is to sum it up, it's not all it's, that it is. The book is incredible. I suggest that you read it whether you believe me or not. It is so interesting and it's so beneficial just to have this information or just start to look into this information if you don't buy everything that she says. But this gut that's filled with um, bad bacteria and, and because of that, our gut lining, the, um, I think it's enterocytes or epi Epithelial cells. I can never remember which is which, but they've been degraded. They've been kind of knocked down so that food particles are getting into the rest of our body where they shouldn't. And our body is just not able to kind of come to homeostasis because we have too much negative bacteria. Again, this is totally layman's understanding, you know, just so normal people get the gist. So when you have something like the GAPS diet. It's not that carbs are bad. It's not that you shouldn't be consuming carbs, even carbs, you know, like pasta. But in this state of like bad gut, bad bacteria flourishing, the, the sugars and the, uh, I'm really brain fog today. The sugars, the carbs, all that stuff, they're only feeding the bad bacteria. They're not going through your body the way that they should and feeding your uh, thyroid, you know, doing all the things that they should do. They're just being eaten up by the bad bacteria. So in their feeding the bad bacteria, making it worse and making the problem continue to go on. So if you say, oh, I'm, you know, doing the, do the diet that the doctors tell me to do a balanced diet with you know, some grains and some fruits and vegetables and meats and everything. I was in that um, place a few years before doing the diet and all I was eating every day was meat and vegetables. I got to the point where it's pretty much just almost raw meats and vegetables. You know, I don't think fruit because I, I thought that was sugar and I, and I still could not go to the bathroom at all. I was like, if I'm eating this kind of healthy and I'm not, like, there's something very wrong. So you're cutting out the grains and the artificial sugars, the refined carbs, all that stuff for a time of probably at least six months. I did it for two years, though there were periods that I cheated, but the periods where I wasn't cheating, I did it religiously, except for one day a week where I had chickpea pasta, which was a cheat, but it wasn't a super cheat just because chickpeas are a little bit starchy. But um, yeah, and so, so I did the antimicrobial course. And then once I figured that out, did the antimicrobial course, then started the GAPS diet and incorporated vitamin C once a day as supplement, I take a powder. And I feel like those things, the SIBO, to kill the SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, which is bad bacteria being in the small bowel where it should not be, small intestine where it should not be. And then it allowed, because I did try the GAPS diet first, the, um, the first part of the diet, I forget what it's called, but there's a, like the hardcore where you just eat soup for a few days part of the diet. 
And initially I did that, it worked for like a day or two and then I was constipated again. So luckily I found the SIBO treatment. And once I did that, then started the gaps, taking vitamin C each morning, I was able to go to the bathroom and eliminate my constipation every single day, except sometimes the day after I would have the chickpea pasta and have a bit of constipation, but then I'd be able to quickly come back to having a bowel movement every single day. And something I want to mention here, it's very important. I incorporate this diet kind of long term, like now during the week, and I'm actually going to do it again hardcore in uh, February because I've taken some, let's say, medicines that have messed, messed me up again. Um, but if you're switching to this diet, which you're saying like, oh, it's all meat, I think personally, and there'll be data to back this up, it's really important to have a lot of vegetables. You know, your meat is just a little bit, like they say, of your palm and have the meat. Like I have red meat every day, even today. Every lunch I have red meat. And then have a lot of vegetables. Don't have all meat and not put the effort into having the large amount of vegetables because I have seen a blog written by someone, I was very happy to have read it, that the ammonia builds up in your body and that really harms the, uh, the colon, I believe. If you're just having the meat, you really need to have the vegetables and the diet allows for fruit. Um, but I tend to, tend to just have raspberries, I have raspberries apples I don't have too too much fruit just because I have this awareness for me that it's probably not good but um and then you are able to make things breads pancakes whatever it didn't work for me but out of nuts and coconut flowers and that kind of stuff so I will link the book and um so, end of story, the diet, my migraines went down from 12 to 16 a month to one, maybe two, but now it's one. Now, sometimes it's none, but usually I'll get at least one, even if it's just minor. So, that's a tremendous success. I, um, I do something a few days a month, which you can look this up as well, called the uh, Life Diet for my endometriosis specifically. It's like just greens and olive oil and salt and uh, meats, fish, eggs for a few days a week, for a few days a month, and that's it, just before my period. That's specific to endometriosis though. And um, <clears throat> the SIBO, antimicrobials. So just because I think, again, just a layman, but I think so much of our health, and you can see this in other cultures around the world. If you look at the data, you can't get all the data, you can't get, but these long lived cultures in Italy, in Greece, in Japan, you know, in different parts of the world, it, they, they tend to ha eat, consume lots of vegetables. Um, in certain places, like certain places I can think of in Italy, they consume, you know, lots of pasta, but they're made with sourdough. They're made the proper way to feed the gut. They're not just made commercially the way we make them. That takes out a lot of the good stuff. Um, and these are, from what I can see, data and watching, you know, documentaries. They're long-lived. They're working sometimes into their 90s, and they are maybe without things like cancer and heart disease maybe I don't know that's what it looks like and um so I I, I think I think a lot of things have to do oh and fish in some cases they eat fish which I don't do right now but that's good and I, I'm looking to incorporate liver which is a good vitamin A but just like once a week maybe a few times a month. But I think a lot is diet. And our North American diet is fantastic. And I'm so, so glad that it exists as a lover of food. 
But, you know, I think that our mentality that we can have fries and, you know, just burgers with these buns and all the stuff that we eat, like, all the time, like, numerous times a week and tons of pop and all that stuff, I mean, it's not, it's not the way to go long term. It might cause some negative things long term. So I think learning about diet and having a regular healthy diet is so important. It's been so important to me, continues to be so important to me. And if you live with chronic pain, you know, I feel like you come to believe and fight for being pain free and, 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 and having this awareness that getting up every day and just not being in physical pain, that makes me like emotional. Not being in physical pain is everything. And when you can not be in physical pain and just live your life and fight the fight and deal with whatever you have to deal with, you know, that's everything. So I want to share this information. Forgive me for my rambling. This is like, you know, something that I'm really passionate about and I really go all over the place. But um, I will put the links below. And maybe this will find someone who's been struggling with this <clears throat> I know that I know a few people in my day to day that just like were really healthy and everything was good. And then, you know, I started taking like this thyroid medication and thyroid medication wasn't good for me either. But again, doctor, doctor, don't I'm just trying to give an example that I and like since taking the thyroid medication, I'm having diarrhea every day. It's not normal to have diarrhea every day. If you're having to take something and you have diarrhea. But I'm not going against medication. That's doctors, you, whatever. But anyway, I think diet is so important. And doing diet the right way. And I think that just getting this information that, oh, you should eat whole wheat breads and whole wheat pastas and vegetables and fruits and meat and everything will be okay and it will resolve itself. And I mean, I, I, you know, I think that that's very flawed good for a healthy person who doesn't have these health issues but it's not good if you have these specific issues from what I from what my understanding is so thank you everyone for watching this is cast contents and I will see you in the next video